Hello there. Well, I did say that I would show you around uh, the blend file. <coughs> now, this little project here is really just a sketch. Um, this is something I do sometimes. Uh, if someone's asked me to do something, I'm not quite sure how to do it. Then I'll take it to a certain stage as quickly as I can, just to make sure that it's practical. Um, and this little tsunami demonstration has been the result. So I'll take you through the file as I promised and the first thing that I introduced was if you like the ground. Um, now there are some things about the ground that you need to know if you're going to do this sort of thing and so I'll move it to another layer so that we can actually see what it is and what I've got is two different materials one is if you like the general overall ground and one is the rocks um, the rocks are a different material just for appearances sake and the rest of it just kinda looks like estuary mud well that's the idea anyway um, if I go into the edit mode you can see what it is I hit A for select all and you can see that what it what it was was a plane that I subdivided and I subdivided it more in the area around the bottom there where I wanted it to be rough now the purpose for that is to slow the water down because I don't want the water just shooting down here and disappearing really rapidly which it did on my first attempt so I ended up making this rough down here. The rocks of course are rough for cosmetic reasons and there's some ups and downs in various places there's an area here for example which has a groove in it and that was to allow the water to escape in a predefined channel from like sort of the harbour area and in the physics panel you'll see this has been given an obstacle and I've initialized just the volume I could have done volume and shell but don't just do shell okay and it does have to have some volume and for that reason if you look this is actually a solid and I did that by using the solidify modifier and then applied it so that's just the solidify modifier there and then apply it and that's the ground but it's quite important because it controls the way that the water moves when it flows out away from the city so I'll move that back oops need to be in object mode first I'll move that back The next thing is, if you like, the harbour areas uh, and the buildings. Um, all this was was just modelled out of a block and it's very crude. <coughs> this isn't anything like what I would normally do. So um, I'll move that as well and we can have a look at that. So here we've got just the representation of like a harbour area and a few buildings, um, smaller buildings and some walls and other bits and pieces. Some of this is a bit different from the simulation you've already seen because if you like I'm developing my ideas for the final project. Now all this was, as I said, was just carved from a block. If I go into edit mode you can see it's just all a regular block and the physics settings on this was both which is shell and volume um, it's free slip which means the water drains off it really easily and I'd suggest that you use that wherever you can um, simply because it creates a slightly more realistic effect at high scales move that back and 
and the buildings were done the same way the buildings are all just um, blocks and some of them have got a bit of texture added to them so that's all there is really um, the lighthouse that's done the same way that's just an edited cylinder with some textures applied to it um, as you can see it's both um, in this case it's partial slip and the reason for that is I wanted the wave to cling to it as it goes past which you'll see that it actually does um, without that partial slip it just goes past pretty cleanly it doesn't splash very much so you need that partial slip on something that you want that sort of an effect with and the final thing that you well <laughs> not the final thing but I'm going to show you some of the hidden things in a minute but the domain that's pretty important as well you want to try and make sure that everything is inside the domain um, if at all possible I mean I've got this bit sticking out but this bit if we look doesn't actually have any fluid physics um, I'm not bothered with that it's just scenery it's just dressing that piece um, so here we are in the domain and for the purposes of this, my final resolution has been 320, um, which gives you quite a high, <laughs> to say the least, um, fluid cache. But uh, it's worth it for the for the end effect. Um, in general, I'd start off at around about 60 and develop my ideas until it looked good maybe pump it up to 100, try it again, because there are some differences with the way it renders and uh, then go for a final bake and render. Bake on this incidentally for 600 frames takes around about 9 hours which gives you an idea of the time involved but of course you don't have to sit here and watch it, you can do other things and I have been doing other things while it's been running now I've got start 0 and end 16 that's because this looks a little bit better if it's slowed down um, in reality it should be 18 seconds for 600 frames but 16 it slowed it down a bit and that has a different effect from the speed you can play with that if you want and, and see for yourself but it has a lot of different different uh, effects now the fluid world 10 meters is as large as it can get which is unfortunate because this is about probably about 200 meters on us on the narrow side um, so the fluid isn't quite to scale and because of that what I've done is I've reduced the viscosity right the way down 0.1 exponent 1 and for large scenes if you reduce the viscosity the fluid will look better um, if you make the viscosity higher the fluid starts to look well out of scale I mean it looks a bit out of scale at the moment but hey fluid boundaries, no slip and very very important make sure you've got checked remove air bubbles otherwise you will get gaps between everything as you will see in part of that animation um, smoothing off set to 0.6 no subdivisions because I've not got any particles in it this time round for my final I will be using fluid particles so now for the hidden bits uh, I say they're hidden because they're on other layers and they're permanently on those layers because they don't really need to be on this layer and they get in the way the first one is a thing called fluid and this is the bizarre way that um, Blender actually does things um, this fluid simulator because this fluid is in fact it can be bigger than the domain if you want but it's the start point it's how much of your scene that you actually want full of fluid before you start so I've kind of filled it up with a slightly lumpy C that's good enough and after the first six or seven frames that sorts itself out and gives a passable imitation of a C um, I mean literally it does take that six or seven frames because you get all sorts of lumps and bumps in here um, 
so you have to allow it that little bit of time and it's initialized volume only there's no velocity on it you can actually make it move right at the start but I've put no velocity on it whatsoever so that's the first little bit of hidden mystery if you like and the next thing is these two things. These are drains. Um, because I'm pumping a lot of water in, the scene would very rapidly become full of water if I didn't put drains in. So here I've got a drain at the back here because the fluid actually does go underneath the um, terrain. Don't want it coming up through the middle or up the back or somewhere. So I've got this drain. And as you can see, it's an outflow in the physics panel. All it is is just a flattened cube. Um, it's permanently enabled that one. This one, however, um, I turn on and off. I turn it on at the very start, as you can see it's enabled, and I turn it off. And the reason for that is that is part of what causes all the fluid to drain away from the city at the start of the tsunami. And then I turn it on again at the end, and the reason that I do that is that otherwise there's just going to be too much water in the scene and this is just something I found out by messing around it's not something you can calculate so you can see where those two drains whoops wrong one you can see where those two drains come in the scene there they are okay now the thing that makes it all work the thing that makes a wave is this piece. This is my wave. And let's see how it works. As we go through the scene, it gets bigger, and it moves forward very rapidly, and then it shrinks and goes to the back. And as you can see here, also the inflow is animated. Um, it starts off quite low, you've got minus 3 velocity for the water which is going in that direction. You've got a 2 velocity in the Z which is upwards because you need a bit of upwards heft to the water as well. And then when it gets to its largest size I've got minus 8 and minus 4. And 4, sorry, not minus 4. Um, so the fluid is being thrown very quickly that way and slightly upwards. And then as it shrinks, obviously it goes back down again. And I leave it on. And the reason I leave it on is to make sure that the back of the scene here fills up after this tsunami is, is uh, gone, if you like, during the drain cycle. So if I turn this on now... and you can see how it works in relation to the rest of the scene. This is going to take forever because it's... Um, I'm just going to get rid of that... I'm going to get rid of that cache. Right. Here we go. So you can see, camera moves and everything else, here comes the wave, and at this point the water is all sloshing around here and I'm just focusing on there. And that's it. Now a lot of you will have noticed this little box here moving around and you're going to be wondering what that is. What that is, if I go to the material for the domain, which after all is actually the water, you'll see that what I've got is some settings for water and I'm going to do a separate video about water settings because they're quite important. Um, but I've applied to that a surface texture the surface texture is to make it look like the small ripples because the water simulator won't really do that for you. So I'll put small ripples on and 
for the mapping the coordinates come from an object that object is text control which is that one there so if we watch and see what happens with that object as we go through the animation you see that what it's doing is it's forcing all the ripples to come this way so as the water comes out the ripples are moving away from the land and then as the wave comes in the ripples are moving towards the land and then as the fluid drains out the ripples are moving again away from the land and in a slightly different direction and this all just helps to add to the realism of it um, I know it's not very realistic at the moment if you look at the animation and for a full scene there's lots of other things I'd do as well because after all we want foam, we want spray and we want all these good things and the way that I would approach that is the way I normally approach them and that is that I would copy this scene several different times I would run different simulators, I'd run the smoke simulator I'd run um, for some of the spray for example I'd run particle systems for some of the spray and then I'd composite those together at the end um, with the final item because otherwise the blend file just gets too big and you don't want a blend file that's going to take a month to render um, when you can put together several different blend files that maybe take a day each to render um, much easier much quicker also much more controllable so that's kind of it for the tsunami if you've got any questions put them in comments um, please like and subscribe and uh, all those good things and I'll see you again soon